Hey folks, NX19.5 is here. It's got stack blitz, bun, incremental builds for Vite, and as we can see here, a whole lot more. So in this video, we're going to go through all the updates here in this blog post, and we'll see everything that you're getting with the latest version of NX. All right, so first up is we are announcing the NX Cloud Hobby tier. Now this is particularly exciting to us because we've been putting a lot of work into NX agents and we really think that this has the opportunity to change the way you and your company do CI. Now before agents had always been behind a paywall, but in our new hobby tier, you now will have access to NX agents for free. And this should give you the opportunity to experiment with NX Cloud in your workspace and see what kind of impact it has. So if you want to find out more, you can check out our plans detail page here, see what all comes with hobby, and then what you can get by upgrading to pro or to enterprise. And in case you missed it on the NX Cloud side too, we also just launched a new feature called Explain with AI. My colleague Philip wrote a whole blog post on this, so go ahead and check it out. I'll make sure the link's in the description. All right, next up, and this one's pretty big, is StackBlitz support. So when we say we have StackBlitz support, you actually click into the link here on the article and here inside my browser, StackBlitz is launching up. And this is an entire workspace here inside of my browser. We can see down here, we're running NX commands in our terminal. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, that's a bit better. So now I can just run the command NX serve uh, react app, I think is the name of our project. And there it is. So as you can see, as we update the title here, yeah, everything's working. And so now we can use Stackless almost as this playground where we can share examples and hopefully be able to share bugs and issues and also further enhance our documentation by actually embedding stack blitzes into various pieces of our documentation. So we're, we're really excited for this. We want to send out a huge shout out to the stack blitz team as well as community contributor Long Yi Yang or Brooklyn. <laughs> Uh, for their help here uh, with WASI support to get this working. So thanks. All right, so next up we have support for BUN and PMPM version 9 as package managers. So we've actually been monitoring BUN now for a while, both as a runtime and as a package manager. And we've decided to take the first step in BUN support by now supporting BUN as a package manager. So now you can use commands like bun install, bun add, all of the package manager commands, and NX will be able to understand the external dependencies it needs to, to be able to tie your project to the dependencies to be able to put together its graph. And we want to send a huge thank you to community contributor Jordan Hall for completing this work. Thanks, Jordan. You rock, man. And in addition to supporting BUN, and NX now supports the latest format of PMPM lock files. It actually changed from version 8 to version 9. So for a while there, we were only able to support PMPM up to version 8 as a package manager. In version 9, the format changed. We now support that new format change. So you can go ahead and start using PMPM version 9 if that's your package manager of choice. Cool. Up next, local flaky task detection. So we've actually offered this idea of flaky task detection in NX Cloud for a while now. This is actually really cool. If you've ever used it before, uh, on NX Cloud, we'll be able to automatically detect if one of your tests, for example, is flaky, and we'll automatically start retrying that for you as a way of getting around the flakiness. That's really cool in itself, but we now offer local flaky task detection. So as you can see here, we're going to give you a warning if we notice that you're running the same exact code and sometimes you're getting a different result. The benefit here is hopefully you'll be able to identify that flaky task even earlier on in your development cycle. So before you would catch it in CI and we'd kind of band-aid around it. Now you actually have the better result, which is you can identify it earlier and fix the flakiness so that this indeterminate task probably not what you want, let's fix it right now and make sure this is a solid test and we don't have to retry it, which is even better. All right, so up next is Project Detail View Enhancements. So we can't tell the story without talking about Project Crystal a little bit. So before Project Crystal, this is before NX18, you would always be able to see all of your project configuration inside of your project.json files. Now, unfortunately, this was usually redundant because most of the configuration present in those project JSON files was also being managed in other files as well. So for example, if you were using our Vite plugin, you'd have to go into the project JSON file to configure the Vite specific targets in NX, but you'd also have your Vite config, which was doing essentially the same thing. So you'd have this kind of 
mirroring of configuration. It had some problems. So this is why we introduced Project Crystal, which is a way of pretty much, instead of having to put configuration inside of your project JSON files, we would just look at the fact that you had the Vite plugin installed and look at your Vite config and use that as a way of just inferring these tasks for you instead. This is great in general and cuts down a lot of the configuration you have to have in order to use the NX, but it makes it so that you don't have that project.json file if you ever want to see what exactly is going on with your task. So this is where the project detail view comes into play. So if we scroll down here, you can actually see this is kind of what the project detail view normally looks like. Uh, we're going to lay out all the different targets or tasks that you have for the project you're looking at. For this example, it's the web UI E2E project. You can actually expand these tasks to see all of the configuration as it's being determined between, you know, what's in your project JSON file still and what's in your various configuration files for this one for Playwright and ESLint. And if you're using our NX console IDE plugin, you'll be able to see this right there inside of your IDE. If not, you can use this command inside of a terminal and this is going to open up the same exact view inside of a browser. So in this iteration, we've launched several enhancements to that project detail view. For one, we've added more instructions on how to discover options for the underlying tools. So for example, here in the vite serve command, you can see in sort of the description here, we're showing you how to get all the options from vite itself rather than from NX. So we'll see down here, you can run pmpm exec vite dash dash help. There's actually a button right here. So if we were in the IDE, we could just click it and run that and we'd get all of the help and from that, all of the options that we could use. So in addition, we've also added a callout for tasks that leverage the NX atomizer. So we can see that here. So when you're not connected to NX Cloud yet, this is actually yellow because you probably shouldn't be using the atomizer unless you're using NX agents. And we've even added to this pop-up for the atomizer button here, a way to easily connect your project to NX Cloud. This new onboarding process is really sleek. I like it a lot. We've been doing a lot of work on our integration with GitHub lately, and you can see that here. So pretty much all you need to do is click this button to connect to NX Cloud. This page is going to open up in your browser. You just have to find your GitHub repo, select it, and we'll actually create a PR for you that will connect your repo to NX Cloud, and you should be all set from there. And once you're set up with NX Cloud, you should be able to use NX Agents via our new hobby tier to be able to try out this atomizer inside of your CI automatically. So we're really excited about that. Go ahead, give it a try. Let us know how you like it. Let's move on. Next up is pattern support for project defaults. So when you're using the atomizer features from plugins like NX Playwright and NX Cypress, you end up creating tasks with dynamic but actually predictable names. So you can see here, we're actually creating a bunch of tasks based on the spec files that are present in your file system. So there's an example.spec and then there's a test.spec. And that's why we have these two different tasks here. Now targeting these specific tasks via project defaults is something we are actually not able to do before until we introduce the support for pattern matching inside of our target defaults. So as we can see via this new pattern matching format down here, we can actually effectively target any kind of spec file that could arise here. And we can set the target defaults here like it depends on the build. So this should be super helpful for folks using the atomizer. It's one of the things that has been requested a lot. So we're excited to have it supported now. Up next is another feature that has been asked for a lot that we just weren't able to support before, but we can support now. And that is that now individual targets can opt out of parallelism. So one example we'd see this a lot in is end-to-end -end tests, and in particular, like these atomized end-to-end -end tests, where you don't want to have multiple end-to-end -end tests happening on the same machine at the same time. Because a lot of these end-to-end -end tests are doing things where they're touching information in your database or seeding your database in a different way or setting up a certain state inside of your system that if another test is running at the same time, like they're actually clobbering each other's states and you, you don't want to do that. So as we can see here, this is how we would often go around that. We would say, okay, first run your lints and your tests and your builds. Next cloud would kind of go out and manage that. You'd be able to run all of those. And then when it was done, then we'd tell it to go ahead and run all of our ETE CI tests. 
but to do it with parallel of one. And this way we'd get around the problem of having that end-to-end -end setup, like clobbering each other and competing with each other over the same resources. But we actually did something here that's like philosophically grinded my gears, which was, I love what we're doing with CI because it makes it all very declarative. Rather than saying, okay, first you have to run your build, then you have to run your tests, and then you have to end, run your end-to-ends. It's really not like that at all. Like NX Cloud allows us to just say, hey, just do all these and NX, you figure out what order to run them in and what way to use the resources that we're giving you in a way that makes things most optimal, which I think is huge. I've done some videos on this in the past. You can check them out if you like. But by having to work around things in this way, we're actually breaking down that declarative paradigm and actually making things more imperative, which it's still not it's still not to the level of, okay, first run this project's build and then run this project's build and then we can start running the end-to-end -end tests and then run this end-to-end -end test. It's not like that entirely, but it's starting to get there. <laughs> but anyways, I'll get off my soapbox about declarative versus imperative. So the big news we have for NX19.5 is this idea of a parallelism property. So you can see inside of your NX JSON file here, inside of target defaults, you can set it inside of your project defaults. And here we can see we're actually taking advantage of that pattern matching to say all of our sharded end-to-end -end tests here are parallelism set to false, which is great. Uh, parallelism is a option that is supported on all tasks now. So it's not necessarily just end-to-end -end tests or for end-to-end -end CI tests. So you can actually mark any task now as just turning off parallelism. Usually it only makes sense in this end-to-end -end context, but if there's other contexts that it makes sense with too, like it's there now. So the big difference is moving away from having to run two different commands, we can now just run the one command. And rather than specifying here at the command line level to set parallel to one, we're just marking at the task level to not run certain tasks in parallel. And now we can come back to this more declarative approach, which is just saying, run our lints, our tests, our builds, and our end-to-end -end CI tasks. NX is going to know those end-to-end -end CI tasks, don't do them in parallel on the same machine because bad things will happen. That's what this parallelism option does. It's great, give it a try. So up next we have support for incremental builds for Vite. So the big news here is that our NX Vite plugin now supports incremental builds. What does that mean? Well, normally when you create a project, for example, or a library inside of your NX workspace, because your library is in the same mono repo as everything else, normally what would happen is you'd build the application. We'd actually take all of the uh, libraries that you have that this app is consuming, and we'd kind of uh, compile or build all of these things at once to build your application. What incremental builds does is make it so that that library or that project that you have that your app is consuming, it makes it so that you can actually build each one of those projects or each one of those libraries in isolation. So the way you do this is you just add a build target to that project. This way you can build that library in isolation. That part's easy. The interesting thing is when you're then building your application, at the application level, we kind of have to know, okay, rather than pulling in that project from source, instead use that built artifact in order to build our application. And so there's actually a lot of benefits to being able to do this. For one, if you're not touching all of the different parts of your application, like you're only touching one project, in theory, you should only have to rebuild that one project rather than building the entire application. Like you'd still have to pull in all of the artifacts when you're building that application, but using tools like NX Replay, you should be able to just pull them from cache instead of having to run a fresh build on all of them if they haven't been touched. So that's one huge benefit. Also using some of enhancements like NX Agents, if you did have a wide sweeping change that actually did touch a lot of your projects, this way you can actually run more of those builds in parallel and this way you could distribute that building across multiple machines, use the NX cache to then combine these when you actually build the application. It has a lot of way of speeding up your build times, which is huge for our larger enterprise clients that have really large applications with a whole set of projects. This is a way of speeding that up considerably. So now this is supported for Vite. That's the big news. Yeah, it's great. 
All right, up next we have our Project Crystal conversion generator. So we actually started bringing these convert to inferred generators into our plugins in version 19.0. At the time, we actually prioritized our Playwright, Cypress, and ESLint plugins. These were the ones that benefited most from atomization. We've now come behind and added the convert to inferred generators to pretty much every plugin. The ones that are outstanding right now are our React Native plugins. So this includes React Native itself, Expo, and Detox. And these ones will be soon to follow. But essentially, our convert to inferred generator is your way of automatically opting into NX Project Crystal, going from the old way of being explicit in your Project JSON, where your Project JSON is your source of truth, to now having more things inferred. The way this generator is going to work is the same behavior you had before we will preserve after this generator is run so that you should see the same behavior either way. So if you haven't moved things over to more inferred configuration, this is your automated way to do so. It is a generator here, not a migration. So we're not going to run this whenever you run NX migrate. This is more of a explicit opt-in. So you'll just have to run this command. Uh, once you run this command, you'll see a drop-down menu to say which plugins you want to run this from. Select the plugin that you want and we'll adjust this for all of your projects. You can also actually specify it for a specific project if you only want to do one project at a time or you just want to try it out on one project first. Um, so just use the dash P option for that and spe to specify the project, you should be good to go. All right, up next, we have some Gradle updates. Uh, for one, we now support composite builds. So this is a way in Gradle of being able to uh, combine workspaces together inside of Gradle. So we now support this in NX. Uh, an example here is if we include a build here for our number utils and our string utils inside of our settings.gradle file, uh, you can see the NX dependency graph is now going to be able to track those dependencies. Uh, in addition, we now have experimental support for Gradle test atomization. We're using this ourselves because we use the Gradle plugin in a lot of our closed source stuff that we're doing for NX Cloud and elsewise. So just like we have atomization in our Playwright plugins and our Cypress plugins, we're now adding that to Gradle so we can shard out the different tests and be able to parallelize them and distribute them so that you can speed up your CI pipelines. All right, up next is another experimental feature, which is NX release adds file-based versioning support. So like we mentioned, this is an experimental feature, but we are experimenting with the idea of a version bump that we're calling version plans. So the way this works is you actually track your intended version bumps alongside your changes, just like you would do with the conventional commits, but you want to make this independent from the actual commit data. So rather than keeping this inside of your git commit messages, we're actually putting it inside the file system, which is then git tracked. So you can actually touch these files yourselves inside of the .nx slash version plans path. Or you can use our NX release plan subcommand, as you can see here. And this command will take you through interactive prompts to create that file inside your file system. And then when your team is ready to release, you simply run the command NX release. And as you can see here, NX is going to read from your file system in order to determine how to bump the version. It's also going to use this inside of the NX release changelog command to update your changelogs. So anyone who has used the tools chain sets or beats ball will be familiar with this concept of file based versioning. But with NX release, you get the power to combine one or more of these versioning strategies all within the same workspace for different release groups. And we're really excited to keep building out this feature and mark it as non experimental by fully documenting it very soon. All right, so up next is support for React and Angular. The newest minor version of Angular, Angular 18.1, is now supported. You can run the NX migrate commands to get support for this. You can also optionally opt out of the latest minor while still using NX migrate using this interactive flag, as you can see here. And our NX React plugin now supports the new experimental React compiler. You can read a bit more about that via the links we have here. Uh, note that when React 19 does come out of RC, uh, we will not be providing an automated migration via NX Migrate just because there are so many breaking changes here. So as always, you can use NX Migrate to automatically update your 
workspaces to the latest version of NX. This comes with our migrations that are going to fix any breaking changes that come through from NX. And last but not least, our Monorepo World Conference speakers are announced. So go check it out on the links provided here in the blog. I'll put a link here in the description as well. And remember that the conference is coming up soon, October 7th, and that's going to be in Mountain View, California at the Computer History Museum. So go get your tickets now. We've got links here in the blog post, and hopefully we'll see a lot of y'all there. So cool. Thanks, everyone, for checking in with all the newest updates. It was great to check in with y'all again. Hope y'all are working hard. I'll catch you in the next one.